Hello everyone. A little while ago, they added Sally Whitemane as a brand new hero in Heroes of the Storm, which got me itching to cover her story. But since back then we were still in the battle for Azov Rush, I just didn't really have the time for it. Better late than never, I suppose. Let's talk about the story of Whitemane and the Scarlet Crusade. The light has spoken. Little Sally Whitemane can be found within the caverns of time at the old version of South Shore. Here, we see her running around with her friends like little Jimmy Vizash and Renaud Mograine. Running around without a care in the world, but dark times were heading to the lands of Lordaeron. The Lich King recruited Kelfuza to spread the plague across the lands, a plague not only designed to kill, but also turn its victims into the undead. Now, of course, humanity didn't just roll over and let all of this happen. Prince Arthur's Menefil, together with Jaina Proudmoore and their forces, they were sent out to investigate and deal with the problem. They uncovered that the plague was being spread through the grain, the very food meant to sustain their people, and they confronted a man behind all of this. Leave well enough alone. Your curiosity will be the death of you. Are you responsible for this plague, Necromancer? Is this cult your doing? Yes. I ordered the Cult of the Dam to distribute the plagued grain, but the sole credit is not mine. What do you mean? I serve the Dreadlord, Malganus. He commands the scourge that will cleanse this land and establish a paradise of eternal darkness. And what exactly is this scourge meant to cleanse? Why, the living, of course. His plan is already in motion. Seek him out at Stratholm if you need further proof. Kelfuzat was found again, and this time he didn't make an escape. Arthur struck him down, but this didn't end the threat. The plague was still out there, so they journeyed to Stratholm, only to find that they were already too late. Oh no. We're too late. These people have all been infected. They may look fine now, but it's just a matter of time before they turn into the undead. What?! This entire city must be purged. How can you even consider that? There's got to be some other way. Damn it, Uther. As your future king, I order you to purge this city. You are not my king yet, boy. Nor would I obey that command even if you were. Then I must consider this an act of treason. Treason? Have you lost your mind, Arthas? Have I? Lord Uther. By my right of succession and the sovereignty of my crown, I hereby relieve you of your command and suspend your paladins from service. Arthas, you can't just... It's done! Those of you who have the will to save this land, follow me. The rest of you, get out of my sight. <laughs> You've just crossed a terrible threshold, Arthas. Arthas saw no other way of saving his people than to end their lives, despite those close to him, like Jaina and Ufer, trying to change his mind. He gave the order to suspend the Paladins of the Silver Hands, an organization formed way back when, when the Horde invaded for the first time, but Ufer and others, they still had a King Terranus, who was not down with what his son was doing. When Arthas finally made the journey to Northrend to confront Melganus, his father ordered his son to come home, a request that the prince ignored. He would go on to pick up Frostmourne and claim his vengeance upon the Dreadlords, in exchange for the mere cost of a piece of his soul and becoming an agent of the Lich King, that which he tried so hard to fight against. When he returned home, he greeted his father with the tip of his blade, and he destroyed the kingdom. Many paladins, like Ufer, they fell to Arthas the Death Knight, but those that remained, those that still tried to fight for the people, they rallied behind heroes like Sadan Dafrohan and Alexandros Mograine. Those of you that are familiar with the story of the Ashbringer, you might recognize the name Mograine, as with this holy blade, he brought righteous vengeance upon the undead. A near unstoppable force, something that the Dreadlords took notice of, so they hatched a plan to take care of him. First, they set a trap at Strathholm, where Dovrohan was separated from his comrades and cornered by the Dreadlord Belnazar. He slew the paladin and took up residence within his shell, infiltrating their order from within. This gave him access to the children of Mograine, specifically Renaud, the eldest of the two, and he worked on turning him against his father and his brother Darien. There was already a rift since his father, he kind of favored Darien, and Belnazar, he preyed upon the darkness within Renaud's soul, convincing him to betray his father in exchange for great power and prestige. The eldest agreed, and he lied to his father, convinced him that Darien had been kidnapped by the undead and taken to Stratholm. With all haste, Alexandros and Fairbanks, a close friend and trusted advice to the father, they rode to Stratholm right into a trap. 
Countless undead were waiting for them there. And while Fairbanks simply fell under their numbers, Mograine, he kept slicing them down until countless turned into only a few, and even those few fell before the Ashbringer. The battle had been endless. Mograine was tired, and he had dropped his weapon. This was the opportunity that his son had been waiting for as Reno appeared. He picked up his father's blade and he stabbed him in the back. Alexandros was betrayed by his own son. And even worse, his body was claimed by the now lich Kelfuzad and he went to work. Working on twisting his thoughts and dreams until all that remained was the Death Knight Mograine, one of the four horsemen wielding the corrupted Ashbringer. I was In the meantime, their order was not doing so well. They found out about Alexandros' death. Fairbanks had actually survived the trap of Strathulm, but as he tried to expose Renault, he was placed in chains. Belnazar was still covering for Renault, corrupting him from within, and while some suspected that a dark force had taken hold of Tafrahan and his closest followers, they simply had no evidence. Some of them wanted to recruit help from different races against the Scourge. Others believed that the organization should remain pure. Their suspicions and different ideals, it created a division between the paladins. The holy warriors, they splintered into two separate factions. Whereas the Scarlet Crusade, they deceived Renault Mograine as the first commander. While others, they formed the organization known as the Argendon, which Darian Mograine joined. Belnazar retained full control over the Scarlet Crusade. It was just the army that he'd been searching for, and it soon became synonymous with corruption and extremism. The Silver Hand failed, Paladin. Join us. Take up the path of vengeance. Yes, we get it. You're edgy. Congratulations. Can we move this along? All of this brings us back to Sally, as at a young age she witnessed her family succumb to the horrific plague of undeath as they were traveling through northern Lordaeron. She was then forced to destroy her parents and siblings when they rose as mindless scourge minions, leaving her wrecked by guilt and rage. Ever since that day, the fierce and priestess had found fulfillment and pleasure in only one thing, the destruction of the undead. Within the Scarlet Crusade, she found a perfect organization to fulfill that wish. Now, of course, having a Dreadlord secretly lead the organization, that led to quite some dark and disturbing things. The Headless Horseman, for example, that came out of Belnazar's dark manipulations. But the organization as a whole, they became more and more fanatic. When Sylvanus and the Forsaken laid claim to the capital, the Crusades, they did not care that they had regained their free will and that they had stepped away from the Lich King. To the Scarlet, they were just undead, and as time went on, they could no longer see the difference between the living or the undead. All that opposed them, they were eradicated, quite a threat to the world, something that played out in classic World of Warcraft. But lore-wise, the story might be what happens in the comics, rather than what happens in-game. It's in the comics where we read about Darian Mograine and the Argendon as they infiltrate Naxxramas in an attempt to save his father. In the end, Alexandros is slain, but his spirit is still tied to the corrupted Ashbringer, which whispers to his son to take him to his brother, take him to the betrayer Renault within the Scarlet Monastery. Once there, the spirit of the father shows up to slay Renault, and the story ends with Darian being forced to sacrifice himself to stop Kelfuzad and the Scourge. But by doing so, he delivers himself into the hands of the dead and the damned. He would go on to wield the corrupted Ashbringer in the service of the Lich King. Meanwhile, in-game, we had two different quest givers that led us to the monastery. The Horde was asked to go in by Dark Ranger Felonara, considering that she's an undead, she's not a big fan of the Scarlets. For the Alliance, you met up with Joseph the Awakened, a former crusader that had requested aid to help him take out the leaders of the Scarlet Crusade and actually reform it. Joseph joined them as a young paladin, eager to cleanse the world of evil. Little did he know of the dark truth to these fanatics. Back then, back in Classic, the place was still separated into four different sections. We had the graveyards, the library, the armory and the cathedral. Our quest began in the graveyard, where we found Sally's old friend Vishash, working as an interrogator for the Scarlets, ripping those delicious secrets of his victim's flesh. He is the cruelest man that Velonara has ever met, extracting information from her mother during the initial outbreak of the plague. He, together with Thanos, also take great pleasure in torturing new recruits to ensure that they are pure. They are the first that we need to slay, after which you could take on the library with Arcanist Doan and Howmaster Loxy. They maintain the powerful defenses that protect their fellow Scarlets, while they're also busy teaching new recruits to wield the arcane arts. Joseph believes that the light is the only true path, so they have to go. Our adventure has quite the effects on Joseph though, as he starts out as the Awakened, but slowly but surely, he becomes the Crazed, until finally the Insane. Herod, the Scarlet Champion, residing with the Armory, he will be our next target, as that's the place where they're training new warriors, and Joseph believes that he's no true champion at all. 
It's he that should be the champion of the Scarlet Crusade. That dirty thief stole what should be rightfully his. Now despite what Joseph might want, the Scarlet Commander Mograine and High Inquisitor White Mane, they refuse to make him the new Scarlet Champion. Of course, that doesn't sit well with Joseph the Insane, so he wants us to slay them so that he can re-establish the order as it always should have been, with him at the head of things. He'll take care of the Forsaken and the Scourge for good. Even plans to take on the Undercity, while Dark Ranger Velonara, she wants us to do the same, but instead, she of course claims the Monastery for the Forsaken. So yeah, this is the bit where the game conflicts with the comics, as Renault by this point is already slain by the spirit of his father. Yet all the same, here we see him standing with Sally, and the fight, it was quite awesome, as you first started with just Renault, and pulling him without clearing the cathedral first, that would cause all of them to charge at you. Infidels. They must be purified! After bringing him down, Inquisitor White Mane actually shows up, not quite ready to let go for champion. Mograine has fallen? You shall pay for this treachery! The entire party is put to sleep as he uses her command over the light to bring him back. Arise, my champion. At your side, milady. Now you have to deal with two bosses at the same time. And of course, the healer goes first. Mograine... Heroes, brave and crazy enough to take on classic Noxramas, they had a chance to obtain the corrupted Ashbringer for themselves, and like Darien, they too could take it to the monastery. Again, the spirit of his father slays the treacherous son, and even High Inquisitor Fairbanks is released from his terrible curse. Sadly, Sally doesn't really seem to play a role in these events. Now the plans of Joseph and Velonara, they seem to have been quite ambitious, as the Scarlet Crusade is very hard to get rid of. Countless adventurers have tried to wipe them out. With Rolf the Lich King, we saw the return of Darien Mograine and the Death Knights. They too took on the Scarlets, their survivors now calling themselves the Scarlet Onslaught, as they set sail for Northrend. There, they would once again fall under the leadership of a Dreadlord, Melganus this time around. Well, Belnazar, he was taken on during Classic, but since Dreadlords, they cannot die in Azeroth, he too made a return. While the Scarlets just kept on coming back, time didn't stand still. Banshee Queen Sylvanas Windrunner, she was able to claim revenge upon Arthas for placing that curse of undeath upon her, and with her goal accomplished, she decided to kill herself. The only problem is that there was no eternal bliss waiting for her, instead it was a realm of torment. So it was that she made a bargain with the Valkyr. They would be released from the new Lich King control. In exchange, they would take Sylvanas' place in Hell, and even allow her to resurrect new Forsaken. This led to the resurrection of the one and only Lillian Voss, who wasn't too happy with what they'd done to her. Unable to come to grips with being a Forsaken, she sought out her former life. Her father, High Priest Benedictus Voss, had trained her to be a Scarlet Crusader, and now his own daughter was one of those creatures that they fought against. He put out the order to have her executed, which, as you might imagine, Lillian couldn't really appreciate. Instead, it was she who executed her father, and then disappeared for a little while, until the time of Mr. Pandaria. It was then when we found a hooded crusader, Lillian in disguise, who guided us through the revamped bastion of the Scarlet Crusade, with now only two wings to party through, the Scarlet Halls and the Scarlet Monastery. We killed a whole bunch of the crusaders again, but the problem is that they just keep on coming back, even after death. Behind those resurrections, that is High Inquisitor White Mane. With her death, so goes the crusade, and to give them their final rest, Lillian is going to need two swords of legends. The Blades of the Anointed are at rest here in the monastery, which makes it easy enough to gather them, and once more we confront the Inquisitor, this time not with Commander Mograine, he's been replaced by Commander Durand. My legend begins now! But my legend... You shall pay for this treachery. Arise, my champion. Mograine. The fight, it still pretty much plays out the same. White Mane resurrects her champion again. We take them on and we take them out. But this time, by plunging those blades into her corpse, they should stay dead for good. As a bonus, Lillian now has some very special blades, which should serve her well as Colomance and her fight against the Necromancers. But not even this was good enough to wipe out the Scarlet Crusade. Not even this was good enough to put an end to Sally White Mane forever. With Legion, the Knights of the Ebon Blade, under orders of the Lich King, they went out to recruit brand new horsemen to help them fight in the war against the Legion. Now Scream and Trollbane, they've already been recruited at this point, and the third horseman, that's going to be... Here. Inquisitor White Mane was a priest whose personal tragedy forged an intense connection with the light. Her zealous power of will is necessary to strengthen the bond of the four. Travel to the 
the Scarlet Monastery and raise the High Inquisitor from her tomb inside the cathedral. We must fall. There are few in this world who have lived with more conviction than High Inquisitor White Mane. Death has a way of quelling the madness of a mind. I'm sure she will serve the Ebon Blade without compromise. We have but one single purpose here, to raise Sally Whitemane as a Death Knight of the Ebon Blades. But while we're here, we also take on the remaining Scarlet Crusaders, and we use their fallen against them by resurrecting them as ghouls. The Scourge has risen against us. Send the invaders back to their graves! Should you fall, know that your sacrifice will bring me great glory this day! Are there none among the Scarlet Crusade with the strength to challenge me? Trollbane has taken upon himself to coat the walls with the Crusader's blood. And man, oh man, does it look amazing. Those who terrorize the innocent have no place in this world or the next. The Realm of Shadow offers little respite to the souls of the wicked. You defile the sanctity of this chapel with your presence. The holy light shall burn you! By the power of the light, I will banish you, Scourge! My faith has forsaken me? Death can bring a silent peace to the soul, but not for Sally. Her death is one of regret and unrest. We will offer her the chance to atone for her crimes. The price will be high, but they have little doubt that she will pay it. Rise up, High Inquisitor! Your Death Lord calls you back to this world. I... I live? Is the anguish of death over? We have not come to offer peace, High Inquisitor. Why then? Why have you done this to me? The Day of Reckoning is at hand. The Burning Legion has come to destroy our world. The Knights of the Ebon Blade have come to offer you a chance at atonement. Atonement? I doubt that such a thing exists for me. Join us, and we will find out together. Indeed we shall. There is no greater hatred and scorn in this world than death would exist in Sally's hearts. The Burning Legion will pay for all that they've taken from her. The day of judgment awaits, but theirs is at hand, and she will be the executioner's blade. She will not rest until every demon lays dead, their corpse paving the very ground that she walks. We do what the living cannot. The fourth and final horseman, the one that will lead them all into battle, was chosen by the Lich King to be Tyrion Fordring. That meant that the journey took them to Light Hope Chapel, the damned place where Darien once sacrificed himself, where he and the Death Knights once stepped away from the damned path. And it is not only the resting place of Tyrion, it's also the Paladin Order Hall. Interred just beyond those walls is the body of Tyrion Fordring, one of the greatest champions our world has known. The Silver Hand will not give him to us willingly. So, we will take him by force! Death Lord, we will begin at your command. We will. There is a tomb behind the chapel where the power of the light is weak. Raise the dead from within the tomb, and it will distract the guards long enough for us to make our way to the chapel. Tread carefully, Death Knight. This is holy ground, and we have little tolerance for your kind. My lord, we're under attack! It, it's the Ebon Blade! Tyrion's body rests below us, in the Hall of Champions. We will join you shortly, Death Lord. You will not succeed, Tyrion. <gasps> the Light will not allow it! It's Lady Liadrin holding down the forts as we fight her in the Halls of Champions. It seems like the High Lord is out questing elsewhere, possibly finding the Legion, but Liadrin is not the final line of defense. Without monsters, there can be no heroes. The time has come, Death Lord. 
Tyrion Fordring awaits. At last, the four horsemen shall have their leader. What is this? No, I will not allow the Ebon Blade to fall! The Death Gate? Take it! The light itself protected one of its greatest champions, and Darian heroically sacrificed himself to get us out of there. You would imagine that the Lich King would know that Light Hope is out of the reach of death, or perhaps he actually did. Hi Lord, we must do something before it's too late. The light has ravaged his body. There is nothing we can do for him. Even in a lifetime of war, I have never before seen such sacrifice. Darian Mograine has sacrificed more for the Ebon Blade than any other. His body lays before you, broken, scarred. But death is for the living. It has no power over the damned. before you, Death Lord. Command him to rise. Darian can see now what he did not see before. His destiny were written long ago, and like his father before him, he will take his position as leader of the Four Horsemen. Horsemen! Our destiny is at hand! The Burning Legion shall tremble before the power of the Four Horsemen! And so, Sally Whitemane rides her undead steed into battle, flanked by Nusgrim, Trollbane and Mograine. The Four Horsemen took on the forces of the Legion, and their sacrifices played a key part in saving the world from the flames. The future is still very much unknown. The world might have been saved, but the battle for Azeroth is upon us. Alliance and Horde are duking it out, while other threats lurk beneath the surface. Who knows if and when the Four Horsemen will ride again, but for now, this is the story of Sally Whitemane. A tragic story. A child who saw her parents and siblings fall into undeath. A priest who fell in with a corrupted organization. Now she's an undead herself, trying to atone for the sins of the past, and even becoming a hero within Heroes of the Storm. No one expects the Scarlet Inquisition! As always, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!